Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome to today's show, which just happens to be episode 701. Today, something a little different for you. Two separate vehicles with two separate owners in this week's Classic Restos on the road. <laughs> Now, I don't want you to think that Fletchy has lost the plot any more than usual, but the first vehicle here today is a late 1990s model. No chrome bars, I know, I know. But this is more a short story about a hard-working lady that's a delivery driver. She loves her Hilux, and it's done over 1.5 million Ks. <laughs> Complete with gorillas in her front yard, meet Michelle Evans, a hard-working delivery driver with her beloved 1997 Hilux. Michelle doesn't want anything with a larger tray because then her customers will want her to carry more. Michelle runs the Hume Highway into the western parts of Sydney, servicing mainly the automotive trade. A lot of people around those industrial areas know Michelle. After all, she's been dropping stuff off and picking stuff up for almost 40 years, and the trusty Hiluxes have been her working mule of choice. And away we go. How's this for a dynamic lady? How are you, Michelle? Very good, thank you. How are you, Fletch? I'm great, great. Thank you for uh, for letting us see the work ute. Now, there's lots of stories about big Ks on vehicles. We, we, we know that. Um, but here we have one sole individual case where you virtually live in this thing, Monday to Friday. What's the story, Michelle? Well, I'm a courier and I drive eight hours a day, non-stop, uh, delivering spare parts for everybody else to have their cars and vehicles fixed. So um, if your mechanic hasn't got their parts, it's my fault. <laughs> In the western area of Sydney, right? Western area and the southern highlands. Yep. There you go. Now, we're talking a 1997 Hilux uh, the Hilux people, you, you're going to be watching this and everyone's nodding their heads. Th these things, they they really are unbreakable, aren't they? Oh, fantastic. This is my second one and I had one at 84 and it done 1.2 million Ks. I cannot fault them. The best cars out I said, and very reliable. Easy to get spare parts. Terrific to work on. Yep. Um, yeah, fantastic car. Okay, so your secrets, uh, I know with, uh, with, with my fair lane at home that I still have with 733,000 Ks on it, driving it every day for 18 years, uh, nothing real special in terms of secrets, it's oil and filters every 10,000 Ks, that's all I did. Yeah, exactly, oil, filters, um, and just keep an eye on it. If something doesn't sound right in your vehicle, check it out first up. It might be minor. But that minor problem yep. leads to bigger problems. It's the old preventative maintenance, Michelle, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. If, if you look after it, it will look after you. Absolutely. Great words. Now, we've got the 3RZ engine here, 2.7 litre, fuel injection, obviously petrol. Now, driveline, five-speed box, tail shaft, universal, diff. What's the story there? Oh, fantastic again. Um, original diff is still in the vehicle, so it's done 1.7 million Ks. Gearbox was done at uh, 1.5 million Ks. Um, yeah, I can't fault it. Um, what about your clutch? Clutches aren't too bad, depending on the brand of clutches. I've yeah. learnt that, heavy duty or whatever. But yeah, um, yeah rear brake shoes are the best. I've gone through two sets. You know what, when it's all said and done too, this is a testament to yourself because it's how you are driving this car. You've got mechanical appreciation. You're a good operator. Yeah, and, and don't fresh them about. They're a vehicle. Once again, you look after it, it'll look after you. Yeah. While it's on the road, I'm earning money. If it's not on the road, I'm not earning anything. So um, that's the best way to look at it. Now, just recently, you had to put another engine in it. 
Quickly tell us that. Yeah, I um, had it rebuilt actually because it was the last of the Japanese motors and um, it had done one point, we'd worked out that it had done 1.2 million Ks. So when we stripped it down, we found out it had only blown a head gasket. But <laughs> due to the uh, mileage, we thought we'd go all the way and, and replace the bottom end and, and do it. Yeah. But the best thing was it didn't need reboring. Yeah. The crank didn't need um, regrinding. Just a, just a linish and put it back in. A linish, put it back in, all new, all new gears and that, and away she went. And I can't thank the guys enough that yeah. got me back on the road yeah. very quick. Give them a plug in Western Sydney. Who are they? Advanced Performance. Yeah. Uh, they've redone it and Highlands um, Transmission down at Mittagong actually yeah. put the whole lot back in together. And it, since, since they've done it, I haven't even had to go back for any little niggly problems. That's tremendous, Michelle. So the ute itself all up has done around the 1.7 million. Yes, 1 .7, or over 1.7 million. Um, but I can't fault it. I think it'll outlast me. And what I love about it so much is the fact that um, it's very reliable, hasn't let me down. Um, I've got no hesitation of keeping it for another, until it sees me out. Going up and down the highways, I know it's going to get me to work and back home again safe. When I'm driving around, I, I, I do a lot of uh, truck spare parts places, slain built trailers, they build trucks uh, and a lot of my parcels are to them to keep their trucks on the road. A lot of mechanical stuff, bearings and things like that that um, actually keep a lot of people on the road, keep a lot of industries going in uh, industrial industries, conveyor belts. Uh, I've learned a lot more out on the road than what I ever have. Uh, but yeah, I can honestly say the Toyota Hilux, I would never go another vehicle. Michelle, thank you. I just wanted to do this little segment on today's show. I, I think it's very worthy. At the end of the day, these are the people that uh, are the salt. They're like our truck drivers. They're the salt of the earth. Up every morning uh, when a lot of people are still in bed, uh, doing the big Ks, a delivery driver. We, you know, they can be uh, taken for granted. So a little bit of recognition, I think, goes a long way. So you and your Hilux, well done, Michelle. And uh, well, keep the dream alive, hey? Yeah, thank you very much, Fletch, and it's a pleasure to be here. You're welcome. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Bye-bye. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid-up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified Service Network. Welcome back. And wasn't Michelle an absolute gem? Next guy up on today's show, a retired motor mechanic. And when this guy chooses to restore a vehicle, he goes all the way. Time now to get up close and personal with Kevin Tomlinson. Kevin lives on his own, this is Kevin, and he enjoys a no-fuss, simple lifestyle. Spinning the spanners for over 40 years, Kevin still enjoys his shed today where his projects take place. At around 80 years of young, Kevin thrives on the longevity that his automotive passion and hobby give him every day. If he wants to sleep in, he can, and if he doesn't, well, it's off to the shed. Kevin is pretty well self-contained here in his environment, having most tools on hand, and he seldom seeks outside assistance. His years of experience in his working career certainly have paved the way for being able to do the jobs he does today. His active hobby has also earned him an element of fitness, and that's where Kev's mechanical work has also paid off. Today, he shares with us his immaculate 
fully restored 1965 Volkswagen Beetle. Inside the shed of Kev's, how are you? Good, mate. Very good, Fletch. Nice to see you. Thanks, mate. Nice to see you too. And you've got the place looking nice. You've uh, you've you put the broom through by the look. Oh yes, I, I like to keep it tidy and clean. I don't, I don't like having a filthy uh, turnout around like my shed where you got to chip over most things. And you should see some sheds I go to. <laughs> yeah, no, I like as I say, I like to keep everything uniform and where it's accessible. Yeah. And um, easy to do uh, to work with, you know, things like. That. Absolutely, you you do a good job, and and it shows in your workmanship. Um, always been very thorough, and uh, when you do a job, you you do it right. And a couple of projects on the boil. We've got an outstanding 1965 Beetle that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but before we talk about that restored car, which would be one of the finest you'd ever see. There's another one behind us. What, what's the what's the story of where are you up to there, Kev? Well, it is a 1958 V-Dub Beetle. And I purchased it off a, um, a lady that was living over in uh, Baradu. This lady used to bring the car in to, uh, and always want me to do the service work on it. And uh, anyway, I kept a track of it and then... After a while, she couldn't drive it anymore because of a health condition. And um, she rang me one day and asked me if I'd be interested in in buying it. I said, oh, I'll come and have a look at it for you and uh, see what I think. And I I knew what it was all about or how the car was uh, taken care of and well well maintained and everything. And um, at the time, she said, look, I'd like about $5,000 for it. And I, I said, oh, no, 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 that's that's a bit too much for me. I said, look, I'll give you $2,000 for it. <laughs> so I purchased the car for $2,000. And at the time it was registered and I was driving it. I had been driving it for quite a while. And um, then at, um, at the time I thought, well, I've got a lot of cars now running on Rego. So I thought I'd better eliminate a couple or one or two so I decided to uh, take the rego off the the 58 Vita Beetle and I was thinking of then about restoring it so I wanted to keep the rego on my 65 which I have the body needs to be um, sandblasted and um, treated uh, a couple of little uh, marks on it and dents and so forth and if uh, it can be um, done, that, and then yeah. it's a matter of lifting the body off yeah. and getting that work done. Yeah. And it's, uh, a, it's a clean example for a 58. It's a fully imported German body, yeah, right. 58 model. Yeah. There's no rust, no sign of rust in it. And I, whilst I had... Um, do, you, do you believe you, you still have to have it sandblasted though? Oh, I would, it'd have to get back to to uh, a clean start to repaint it. There you go. See, no rust, but Kev will still sandblast the car, get it back to that original metal and, and, and go from there. Fine finish on it, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, in the meantime, I've rebuilt the engine. The engine's been completely rebuilt. And it's good to see that engine right there. You've got it covered in a blanket. So you've got to look after stuff. <laughs> Mechanical things have feelings too. They can get cold, can't they, Kev? You've got well, to put, got to put a yeah. put a rug around them. Yeah, and and with moisture, the way we're yeah, having true. all That's all true. this rain and, yeah. and the moisture, it, yeah. no matter how well it's covered, yeah. it can still get a rust yeah. covering. That's a good point too, and uh, we we can talk about this because obviously uh, Eastern Seaboard of of Australia has had a lot of moisture for quite a while now, and we're still going to have some for quite a while. And a little tip too, um, stuff you don't think of, but ventilation's a big thing in your shed and um, to keep mould away and all that sort of thing and even running a fan in your in your shed just to keep that air circulating is a um, is an important thing absolutely you've done it right Kev you've got insulated uh, ceilings there under the uh, under the iron so you've you've even done that well to make it comfortable for yourself Now, the 1958 car behind us, Kev, we'll keep in touch with you. It'll be a little while down the track, but when it's on the road, we'll have to come back and, and feature that yeah. and uh, because that's uh, going to be something very, very nice indeed. And speaking of which, stay where you are because after the break, when we return, we'll then feature Kevin's 1965 Beetle that's been fully restored. 
as well. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. If you own a classic and you'd like to inquire about tools, memorabilia, or some laid up cover, why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. Keep in mind too that the Shannon's Club awaits you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au as Australia's largest online automotive hub. Uh, the FJ, that's my first car I ever purchased in my FJ Holden. It was a great car to start with and uh, it was a, um, a car that I was still working as an apprentice and then of course I had to try and build up a uh, deposit to buy the car which at the time was £650 to buy it. And this was another car that I had purchased in um, throughout the year, it was a uh, little mini 850. Ah, uh, and then of course the Volvo 122S it was a 1965 Volvo 122S and it was a fantastic motor car. Uh, my, last, uh, my second one was the XB Fairmont, the VO2 V8 and it was an amazing motor car. I really enjoyed the driving of that motor car and you get good long distance driving car. Okay, that was just a few um, cars that I've had over the years, from the early years of driving and so forth. And of course now I've got a 1965 VW Beetle which I've fully restored and it's been an amazing little motor car and it's been a wonderful car to, and it's, uh, I've had it well within 20 years now, more possibly longer. And uh, it's had uh, trips down to Victoria, but no, no problems whatsoever with this car. And I've done some little modifications with it. I've set it up, fitted up front disc brakes on the front system, brake system. And it's got what they call a um, camber levelling uh, spring set up on the rear, rear swing axle. Because with a swing axle, well, if you go around corners, the, the, the wheels can tuck in, tuck inside. And likely if you're going travelling around the corner very quickly, it can, you can turn your car over. But with this, uh, this compensating spring set up on the back, it eliminates that, that um, wheel, the swing axle, from tucking in. And apparently they used it a, a lot on the V-dubs were involved in... Uh, in the early um, years of rallying with, with the VW Beetles. Well, originally, I had the FJ Holden and, and I wanted to get into a smaller car. I thought I would like to purchase a smaller car. And at the time, at the, then, in that era, in the 60s, there was either two to choose from. It was either the Mini or the VW Beetle. So, in the... Um, in the idea of it, I thought, well, I'll go and have a look at a Mini. And there wasn't a Mini dealership locally in the district here, only up in Goulburn. So I travelled up to Goulburn and I had a look at this Mini and I thought, hang on here, one little dial in the centre of the dash, sliding windows. I said, no, nah, this is no car. <laughs> so I drove all the way back from Goulburn to Bill Warner Motors, which was a VW dealer's, I said to Bill Warner, he was a proprietor, I said, Bill, I want a trade-in price on a VW Beetle. That was in 1963. And um, at the time he said, righto, he said, what we can do, 
We can uh, take you down to the warehouse. You can select whatever colour you want of the car and drive it back and we'll do our pre-delivery service for it on the car for you. And that was in 1963. And I had that car and, and I, again, I've set it up with uh, a lot of accessories and really made it look attractive. And uh, I've been for a trip to the Snowy Mountains in, in the, um, and I thought this is a beautiful, a, a wonderful car. You don't have to worry about worrying about water leaks or problems with overheating or anything like this. And being up in the Snowy Mountains, it was the it was a, a best choice to have in that area, you know. With the 65 VW Beetle, it's been a, a pleasant car and it's a lovely car to drive. And what I have done, like I've, I've made some alterations with it, in the engine department, I've built the engine up to a 1500cc motor. General, normally they come out as a 1200cc and I built it up to a 1500cc motor and I've also fitted up a, a later carburetor on the, and it's given it that much sweeter performance and it, it drives well, honestly. It's really nice to drive. And I've driven some of my mate's cars and they don't have that same characteristics of, of the get out, really want to go and, and feel comfortable in driving it and smoothness in driving it. Well, I had the, um, the interior done. Actually, it was, uh, was mentioned to me, recommended to me, to have the um, the car upholstery fitted out up in from a firm up in Goulburn, I said, "Oh, well, okay." At the time, the car wasn't registered, so I had had to trail the car up, and I took the car up to a firm up in Goulburn. There, uh, he did a good job with the uh, seating, the upholstery, the carpentry. The history of the car, I, I, I bought it second hand and many years ago, it was over 20 odd years ago, it was over on, up for sale at uh, a private home up in uh, Moss Vale. And what I uh, learned about the car was that the, uh, the father's daughter that had the car, they were, were the drivers of the, of the car. And it was never abused or um, damaged in any way and, and it was quite in good condition. It was surprising and it was in its best condition for its age. Kev, I've got to say, your attention to detail is brilliant. The 65 Beetle here, uh, do you think the 58 will turn out the same? Well, I, let's, I hope it will. I'm, I'm, I'm looking in that direction to make sure that it's going to be in, in a good uh, position and a good condition as nearly as well as the 65 anyway but it, it's got potential it's a real credit to you and it's uh, going the extra mile too uh, the interior to me is one of the best that i've seen um, to be reupholstered and back to factory original as close as you possibly can get um, also to emphasis on the hood lining and the way that that's been upholstered as well um, the, the trim work is it's really really good it's a it's a real beautiful example mate so good on you thank you thank you very much for that I appreciate that and uh, again with the interior we've got to get the upholstery work done it'll go to the same uh, source of getting the interior done as it done on the 65 oh, with the 58. Yeah. Mm. Now, in the voiceover earlier in the show, I alluded to your age. Do you want to share with us what your age really is? Would you believe at the moment, uh, I'm, on, I'm 82, but by September, I will be 83. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Well done, Kev. Thanks, all right. All the, Thanks, that's, that's okay. All the best here. And uh, another classic example of how uh, these vehicles uh, can uh, keep... The longevity going and yeah. and you've got you've got something here you've got your house you've got your cars in your shed you've got another one here on the way which uh, you know as i said earlier we'll we'll keep in touch with you about that so again thank you very much thank you mate i appreciate it um, i appreciate you your uh, getting it all together for me that's great that's fantastic that's okay just fletchy doing his job yeah <laughs> great stuff you know <laughs>
No, done right. well. Thanks, Good. mate. Cheers, mate. All right. Well, that's a wrap for this week's episode of Classic Restos. A little bit of featuring with Michelle and her extraordinary Hilux 1.7 million kilometres as her daily work office. And of course, the work of Kevin Tomlinson, a beautifully restored 65 Beetle and a 58 on the way. I hope you liked it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.